Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel and today we are going to be talking about something that every prepper does that we should do our best to stop as much as possible. It's probably the most common mental mistake that we make and it is having the attitude that if we just buy something that somehow it's going to be a magic bullet that's going to take care of all of our problems and all we have to do really is just buy that certain thing and we're in good shape. So today I want to talk about a few reasons why there's a problem with that sort of attitude and then also ways that we can kind of improve our thinking and move forward and be more prepared in the process. So the first reason why there's something wrong with that mindset is that a lot of the time when we just buy something sometimes it's not all that good sometimes it's junk especially if we are getting into an area of preparedness that we're not all that familiar with sometimes we just up and buy something without doing the research or whatever the case may be and a an area where that's really common is in the area of like cheap gimmicky survival gear. Perfect example would be when I was a kid, I was a teenager, and I was getting into knives for the first time. And I saw this survival knife at a local flea market. And it was a big knife. It was probably about the same size as like a, a USMC K bar and it had a big blade, it had a saw blade on the back, it had a little survival kit in the handle, and a lot of you knife folks already, you guys are just rolling your eyes, right? And it had a little compass on the back, and the issue was every single thing about that knife was just junky. I tried using it just for some chopping at the deer lease one time, and within a minute, the blade was already loose from the handle. I tried finding it before the video, but I couldn't. And then also, everything in the little kit was a piece of junk. The, the stone, the sharpening stone in the sheath, you couldn't even get it out of the sheath. It was that bad. And of course, the compass, as most small compasses are, it, it didn't work. So... It's much better to not buy something at all rather than to buy junk and depend on it than be disappointed. The last thing that you want to do is be disappointed in your survival gear when you actually need it to survive. And another reason why just buying something isn't really a magic bullet that's going to solve all your problems is you need to take the time to learn how to actually use that gear properly. Last week I did a video over different water filters for different situations and just picking on water filters, a lot of times people buy those without really understanding what exactly they can remove. How long does each one last? And th there's other types of gear that, that we can pick on in this category as well. Things like generators. Maybe you have a, maybe like a small 1000 watt generator and you're thinking that you're going to be able to run a refrigerator, a deep freeze, and like an electric space heater on it. Well, you're not. Okay, so know what exactly your gear was designed for. And also you want to have used that gear enough that you know how it operates, but also how to troubleshoot it as you go along because anything with like a significant amount of moving parts going back to generators, you might have to do certain things to get that started, like in maybe cold weather conditions that you don't have to do in the summer and things like that. So you want to know how to make that work when you need it under as many types of situations as possible. And also you might have to modify your gear. You might have like, for example, I had a, um, I have a BK-16 knife and really that's, that's a really good knife for like camp craft. If you have to carve, food prep, stuff like this, it's just a good general purpose, little smaller knife. And when I used it to start carving, I noticed that the coating on it really, really bothered my thumb. So it was hard to make like push cuts and, and stuff like that. And if I hadn't practiced with that knife trying to make notches before I actually needed it, A, I wouldn't have known how to make certain notches, but also I wouldn't have known that it was going to blister my thumb all to pieces 
So I went ahead and I stripped the coating and I did some other things to it to make it more comfortable to use and now it's awesome. So you want to be familiar enough with your gear to know do you need to change something and also don't be afraid to change it. You bought it. Make it work for you the way that you want it to. And then also I kind of touched on this a second ago but there are some things that you are going to need to practice with in order to use them effectively and probably the most obvious one of those is going to be you know firearms you need to get training if you just have like a gun it's not going to do jack for if you don't know how to use it if you can't shoot it accurately clear malfunctions draw it and then shoot relatively quickly then it's just nothing more than a paperweight and there's a lot of other things that, that the same could be said for. You really need to practice with your gear so that you know how to use it when you need it. And then another problem with just thinking that just by buying something that you're prepared is you need to think how are you going to be able to keep that particular item running as long as you're going to need it for even long term. And in the case of like generators of course fuel is going to be an issue. Do you have enough fuel for that generator so that it'll last as long as you think that you are going to need it for. And different people might have different opinions. Some people might just be worried about three days. Some people might be worried about two weeks. And then some people might be worried about, can I run this thing for six months or more? But point is, have enough fuel for what you need or what you think you're going to need. And then also as far as things like flashlights and other lighting, do you have enough batteries stored or if you have rechargeable batteries, do you have a way to recharge those so that you are going to be able to use that gear as much as you need it? And also you got to think about maintenance. Can you keep a particular item running long term? So going back to generators, things like having enough oil on hand, having spark plugs, having filters, being able to change that oil, change those spark plugs, maybe even adjust the carburetor if necessary. Can you do those basic things to keep your gear running long term? And then also taking it a step further, things like spare parts. I mean, do you have basic, I mean, maybe even a spare carburetor for a generator. Um, then on the other side of things, of course, pins, springs, firing pins, extractors, stuff like that. Do you have those things? Can you change them out on your own? Do you have the tools that you need in order to be able to make those repairs? And then also it goes into things like knives and axes. Do you have sharpening stones? Can you use those sharpening stones? So I just wanted to give y'all something to think about today, uh, especially with Christmas coming up and stuff like that. If you have like a really nice piece of gear, make sure you know a, what it's used for, how to maintain it, how to make repairs, so that if you're depending on it during an emergency situation, then it won't fail, y'all. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.